Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Coins. What'd you say, Charles? I said good morning. How's it going, everyone? Welcome to Morning Coins with John and Chaz. You got John. Oh, and Chaz. Hello, everyone. Uh, You're looking at a still picture because I have an AT&T DSL and... They are just crap. I just wanted to put that out there. Well, if you could next time, please make sure that it pauses when you're smiling. That would be very uh, helpful. You look very gruff right now. If, if uh, well, if I can figure out when that time would be, I would uh, do that. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, we got a good show planned for you today. Um, but before we get into that, you know, we are going to be talking about cryptocurrencies and buying, selling, trading things like that but we wouldn't want you to mistake any of our stuff for concrete technical analysis or specific recommendations to buy or sell isn't that right charles that is right because cryptocurrencies feature stocks and options trading involves substantial risk of loss and they're not suitable for every investor the valuation of cryptocurrencies future stocks and options may fluctuate and as a result clients may lose more than their original investment All investments discussed on the show are for informational purposes only and are not recommendations to buy or sell. Gotcha. All right. Thanks, Chaz. So, I don't know. You didn't see uh, the title that I put on today, but tonight, or today's topic, I put Glitzcoin, Mana Follow-Up, and Phone Films. Got it. Yeah, thank you. As the main main topics. Yeah. I I just... uh... I love doing this show because every time I do this show, I learn something new. And it's just, I'm an advocate of learning. And sometimes you can call me like a knowledge freak or an information freak, but I just love this stuff. So I'm glad we're doing it. And I'm glad that we're doing it too. This is, oh, you know what? I didn't put in that. This is our 14th episode. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm excited. And I, 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 the same way, like learning um, and like doing research, and I like that you do a great job putting that slideshow together and give everybody links and and things like that. So for all of you who are watching, you can go in the description and click on the link uh, for the slideshow and have it. Um, Yes. And it's always accessible. Those uh, Those are public on the web. And so we make those links available to our viewers, and we thank all of you for tuning in. So, Thanks very much, everyone. Yes. Yeah. Any other intro announcements before we get into our coin of the day, our coin du jour? Well, we just uh, – just the fact that uh, everyone sort of – the pundits are always at work, right? And it's like the market is done or the market's going up or, you know, the blockchain is over. Uh I get so tired of reading some of this stuff, you know. Yeah, everybody's got their opinion, but the fact of the matter is we knew this was going to be a rocky road in the beginning, Mm -hmm. and uh, the rocky is beginning to come to fruition, all these blockchain projects. Yes, and we're going to lose some. We're Mm -hmm. going to lose some blockchain projects because they just couldn't make it. That's that's part of the, uh, the project and part of the way things work. I think that's a great point. The other one is um, it, it's this scalability issue or this mass adoption issue. There's a lot of there's a lot of cynicism around the way that it the way that these websites and platforms currently function. Yeah. And so there's you get that oh well it's never going to scale or it's never going to be mass da 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 because you have to transfer from here and transfer to there and wait for validation and da 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 da. But you tell people, well, this is a three to five year proposition for some of these platforms to even be optimal and out of alpha, beta, whatever testing. Yeah. Like everyone, everyone here now is early adopters. And that's why we put up the disclaimer is like at any time, anything can happen. I'm not a, I'm not a programmer. Um, I barely understand blockchain language, but I'm literate. So I try to read as much as I can because I like to be on the cutting edge of stuff. And I just frankly think that this stuff is on the cutting edge. But then there's also cynicism around the amount of energy that it takes to mine. Yes. And in the future, we're going to see some, I think, uh, incredible uh, adaptations to that. 
cool. And uh, some people think mining will go away altogether. Okay, that's interesting. I'm definitely like to hear more on that one. So, all right, all right so let's rock. Gonna, okay, let's rock. Uh, we're gonna skip by the links because those are pretty self-explanatory. Yep. Just click on uh, those so links, you guys, and, and all these are related to topics that we're going to be talking about today. Yes. Uh, so, Glitzcoin. Yep. You know, the diamond industry, it sort of operates under the radar for most people. I mean, there are, you go to the jewelry store, you buy a diamond, and you work with that guy in your neighborhood or some chain outfit. But you know what? There's a whole industry behind it. That diamond has to be mined. It has to be selected, cut, uh, polished, or, you know, I don't know the whole process, but and it has to be graded. And then it goes to the, you know, the sell, the buyer, which the, the retail, or not the retail, but the, the wholesale buyers, and then to the retailers, okay. and then to us. So the Glitzcoin is trying to make this process better, less expensive, and more reliable. And okay. so... In our in our uh, first slide here, I just went over a lot of this stuff, and uh, it seeks to build a blockchain based on the ecosystem for diamond industry, where all trade in diamonds can be conducted and coordinated. That's pretty a pretty big and tall order. So what they're going to do is they're going to create a blockchain. They're going to have a way to track every diamond. They're going to have a way to grade. Every diamond has to be graded by a select, selected uh, grader um, by Glitzcoin. So they're not going to accept just anything. And they are saying that there's four C's. And I'm not sure a lot of people have heard this. There's cut, clarity, color. And the fourth one is the certificate or authentic authenticity of that particular diamond. Mm -hmm. And uh, another important point is, is that they will not take in, be taking any synthetic or fake diamond. Gotcha. Okay. There's a distinction there, really. Synthetic diamond really has the same structure and, and content as a real diamond, except it's made in a laboratory. Hmm. A oh, fake, I see. Okay. Yeah. A fake diamond is one that is like cubic, like cubic zirconia. zirconia. Yeah. Something like that. Right. And a matter of fact, they're getting so good with these synthetic diamonds that you need special equipment to tell it from a re, uh, you know a, a natural diamond. Sure. Okay. So, what's your initial take? What's your initial take on this? I think that the project itself is is fantastic because, like many industries. Diamond industry has been centralized. You know, I mean, I'm sure many people have heard De Beers, you know, and they basically ran the diamond market for so many years. They're the big guns. They tried to create a blockchain uh, system, but it's really not a blockchain. It's just a, a registry. And sure. so it's designed just to record diamonds, which is important that you have a list. Now, my concern here with, with, both Glitzcoin and De Beers blockchain is, they say they're gonna track the diamond. If you buy stuff on the internet or there's a part number, there's a uh, there's a serial number, like on your car, your car has a VIN number. Right, they're all individually registered. Right, and, and that VIN number is pasted all over your vehicle. Mm -hmm. It's in places where you wouldn't think to look. Yeah, it's on the inside of your door, they have it underneath the windshield. It's, it's on the engine It's on the bar. back. Oh, it's on the engine block too? Yeah, it's on the engine block as well. So Glitzcoin, I read their uh, their tracking system and they really didn't go into how they're gonna say, tell one diamond from another. If you have an exact same uh, diamond, how are they gonna tell them apart? And in our links I put there, there is a way on diamonds to etch them with a laser to identify them. Okay. And so what I would like would to see ruin, that, uh, would that ruin the cut or the clarity? It's done on what they call the band around the edge, uh -huh. so it shouldn't touch anything that actually uh, makes the quality changes the quality of the diamond. Gotcha. And so, if they could do something like that, I would be more uh, comfortable with it. But let's face it: anywhere along the line, if someone has a a synthetic diamond 
and it looks just like the one that they have in their hands, the real one, they could switch them out. And, and keep in mind that synthetic diamonds are much cheaper than uh, natural diamonds. Right, right. And for those of you, uh, for, for those of you that are watching, if you could just give us some feedback. One is, do you see the number? Are you able to see the number up there to dial in live? And then the other question is, is the background color for you all watching live changing? Um, because for me, it looks like the background color is like going from brown to green to pink. It's odd. I don't know if I have to. I might have to restart or, or update OBS. I'm not sure. So let me know if the, if if you guys are out there watching live. Uh, Dima Nergaliev, thank you for your upvote. And Sean, thank you for your upvote. We appreciate you guys watching. And all right. So I'll, I'll tell you, I was when you first put it up there, I was like, oh, Glitz coin, jeez, oh, Pete. Bling! <laughs> exactly. I'm like, I'm like, oh, wow. What are they doing? And then I'm like, you know, you think about the movie Blood Diamond and yeah. all the problems that go through, like it, uh, for mining. And like you said, there are major players, and you know that the people that are mining the diamonds probably don't get anything or as much as they should. Is there going to be, like, do they want to even that playing field, like, by helping to create more seamless transactions and, and have miners more in charge of this stuff? Yes, the entire process from coming out of the ground to the retailer to us is going to be tracked. And they are concerned with working conditions of the people doing the mining. So there's that is something that they're going to track as well. Good, good. See, that's all very interesting, right? And it's kind of ironic. We're talking about we have a blockchain show, talking about cryptocurrencies and blockchains that make reference to mining the tokens and coins and things like that. And then this is a company that is taking that and applying it to an actual industry that has mining and it needs to be uh, decentralized and it, it can be part of a public ledger so that's interesting yeah, it's all that control issue you know when you get somebody you know it, they call it monopolies or whatever they want to call it is when you have too too few people with too much power okay gotcha and so we need to, uh, we're, we're, what we're trying to, blockchain is trying to do is spread that out a little bit. Okay. Uh, what do we have next on our Glitzcoin slide? Oh, the use cases. Okay. And what do we have? So. And you're frozen, by it, the way. Pardon me? You're frozen, by the way, if you wanted to. Yeah, I. I off and yeah. on. It's not, if, it's not, it's okay gonna, if you don't want to. I just want to give another plug to AT&T for their terrible, uh. I'm American. telling you, like, I think it's I think it's American ISPs because we Time Warner switched over to Spectrum here, and that's the only like cable option. Like, I don't have AT and T because I use a lot of I use the Ethernet cable for a lot of broadcasting instead of wireless. Right. And so I use that, but it's been even the TV portion, the TV and internet portion has just been terrible. Outages, slow. Um, inexplicable, like just downgrade of of speed, and then like I have to reset my TV modem at least every three days over the last two weeks. It's crazy. It's uh, lack of competition. There, the, you know, when you're you're lim we have limited choices. Nobody has to do anything. I mean, where am I yeah. going to go? You know. That's right. Well, that's exactly right. You have a, a, a most cities in America. You get a DSL provider. You get maybe one other competitive cable provider, and then you get the the cable provider that has all the that has the lock on the area that has all the tools and all the stuff right right and so anyway that's uh that's where we're at here on our connection today in america we have crappy connections um but on our case our use cases yes glitzcoin. back to glitz going use cases integrating the latest blockchain chain technology into the diamond industry. So we talked about that earlier, about how they're going to track things, uh, hook them up with certificates, and uh, be able to have a secure way of transporting, because that's a, that's an object that, in a cryptocurrency, uh, it's all done electronically, but now we have a physical item. And that physical item has to make it from point A to point B to point C and so on to get there. And so 
um, they are going to uh, create some kind of delivery system for that, probably using our conventional, you know, processes like, you know, the, the big box uh, delivery people. Sure. Um, one thing that I did uh, found very interesting is that they're, they're aiming to have a tradable contract, a tradable smart contract. So if they can put diamonds out there with this contract and you buy it and you can uh, take delivery or sell it. Okay. Okay. Right. And more than one, they're aiming at more than one person owning a single contract. So you can split it between people. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. It makes it more affordable. Right. Mm -hmm. So that, I thought that was interesting. I'm not sure what the logistics of having several people own one contract would be. I mean, your obligations to the other contract holders. Uh, I didn't go into that very much, but um, they are, uh, I think that's an interesting idea. And once they do that, they're going to have, they're going to be able to trade diamonds via the internet, you know, and not actually have possession of them. sort of like a futures contract. Yeah, that's very, that's very intriguing. So you would not need to go through a diamond store per se. You would need to go through a vendor or someone that had one. Right. It could be an individual. Yeah, right. So, I mean, I could be buying a contract and, it's, and uh, someone in Europe could be delivering the diamond to me. And I'm looking at this other one, the Global Diamond Track and Trace. So, not only for diamonds that haven't been mined yet, but they're also, they also want to do something to, to uh, track ones that are already out there? Right, yeah. So, it's, so, it's sort of like a registry, but when the, when the diamond enters the system, it's recorded. It's graded by a reputable organization, so okay. they'll take it and put it through the grading process, right? And these are selected by Glitzcoin. Glitzcoin is going to select the graders and uh, the people that look at these things. And then they're going to uh, put them out there as a, a certain grade of diamond and be able to track that diamond. And that's what I was talking earlier about the laser etching to identify the diamond or put a serial number or identification number on it. Yep, gotcha. All right. They use lasers on natural diamonds now to get rid of inclusions, you know, yep. imperfections. Yep. So putting it around the, the band, I think they called it the band, putting it around the band would be, would not affect the quality of the diamond, but it would be able to be identified. And, you know, that's for the for the owner, the end, the end person, the end user on this, would have a way to identify their diamond if it gets stolen. Right, and that is, I think, and that is, that doesn't currently happen. No. It happens, I mean, you get a card, but I think it'll be a little bit different if there's an online registry of it. Right, yeah, now you'll be able to see the actual diamond. And then, and then they're going to have a decentralized market for trade in diamonds. So, I have a question for you. Is the Glitzcoin going to have its own token? And, and welcome everyone uh, that is watching to Morning Coins with John and Chaz. Chaz's video is frozen at the moment, but he's still here. And, still here. Uh, and we're talking about Glitzcoin, a diamond blockchain company. Um, are they going to have a functional coin for... It, 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 I assume it's just going to be a trading coin then. It's it's going to yeah, be a utility a token. token. Yeah, they actually have a token. If we go to the next slide, it's the Glitzcoin timeline. Oh, excuse and me. And talk about the tokens. Gotcha. All right, I'm going to put it on full screen so people can check it out. I don't want to run through every section of this. but Yeah, so, they're, so 2008, they're doing a project scope. That's the first three months of this year. Now they're doing the launch of the public token sale. Did you look to see if that was going on? Yes, it is going on. Okay. And, and I think it's actually been concluded. Okay, yeah, okay, so, right, because we're in quarter three right now. Yeah. yeah GLT token that. listing on exchanges and beta testing of the platform. Right. And so they're, they're, uh, they, I love it when they actually have a timeline. Sure. Because we have seen coin uh, offers in the past that didn't have a specific timeline. To, to get to where they're going. So this shows that they are thinking, you know, they have a process and uh, they're thinking ahead on this. Okay. Yep. And then it looks like by f quarter four of this year, they'll have the track and trace system deployed, fix their bugs, and then do a little bit more uh, adding of features and tools to the exchange. Yeah. Uh, this is moving right along. And uh, 
I, I can imagine that De Beers is shaking in their boots right now because it's going to get the small players into the market. Interesting. And uh, t tell people who are watching why it's going to bring in small players and why an, a larger institutional organization, diamond seller like De Beers, should be nervous. Well, De, De Beers being the big guns in the diamond industry, now we have the blockchain and the door is open. It's no longer being, you know, you're no longer being refused at the door to get into the system. And so being a decentralized system, all the small players can get involved and they can start selling their diamonds and they don't have to compete. Well, they still have to compete with the beers, but they, they have a, a more equal footing now to do that. Gotcha. Okay. And, a big, and a larger market, right? So the market's yeah. going to be huge. They're yeah. going to be able to reach many places. So this is my favorite part. This is where we introduce the team and you tell me whether or not we're uh, we're going to be going with these guys or not. So who well, do we have here? They're diversified, obviously. I, I, ha I actually didn't get a chance to go to their uh, LinkedIn pages uh, and look at that, but um, I see a lot of experience here. I see a lot of diversification, people who are uh, uh, in different industries and, and involved in diamonds. They're not stupid is what I guess I'm getting at. They, they're not people who used to run the Burger King down the street. They're, uh, they're actually people who are involved in this industry. So, If anyone uh, watching is a Burger King manager, <laughs> please don't be offended by that last comment. Hey, listen, if a guy wants a Burger King, wants to open up a restaurant, that's one thing. You know, oh, right, right. To, Can't jump into the diamond industry. <laughs> but if he wants to be a diamond expert tomorrow, I, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> there we go. Just making sure. This is not to downplay people who work in the restaurant industry. <laughs> that's not what I meant. I just meant that we have some kind of flow of uh, expertise. Yeah. In this. So, um and of course, as I tell everyone, go check out these people and see if there's any, you know, you can do a lot of research on the internet. Uh, and they all look. put their LinkedIn profile on there? Yeah, yeah. So they're all showing the IN for LinkedIn. Yeah. On there. So, you know, you can go check them out, see where they've been, what they've done. Yeah, and honestly, I think that's a quick, I mean, LinkedIn is a professional networking social media platform. Um much more respected in that regard for that kind of professional networking than other social media networks. So right. if you put it in there, that's at least a modicum small indicator that they're probably an actual person and they're probably actually doing some work type stuff. That right. They Not like know some about. of the other projects we've seen. Where... Now, is it easy to game and make prof like fake LinkedIn profiles? Sure. Yeah. But if everyone's looking at it, somebody's going to say, well, wait a minute. Yeah. That you never went to that college. All right, is your so your camera still frozen? We have this is Morning Coins with John and Chaz. You can go ahead and put in the uh, that meeting ID that you guys see at the top here. It's changed. It's different than what what, what our normal one is. But you can go to Zoom.us and click in the. 377-237-542 and join live. Uh, talk with us live. You can also put stuff in the chat on the DLive broadcast. And special thanks to DLive and DLive 24-Hour, uh, especially for being a promotional sponsor of this show. Yes, thanks so much for that. We appreciate so, that. And your camera's back. Yay! Yeah, I'm moving now. I'm not a ventriloquist. So what are we doing with Glitzcoin? Yeah? Just keep an eye on them? I would, yeah. I think that they're a very viable project, and uh, I would, uh, I would watch these guys and see what's going on. And, okay. Uh, you certainly, uh, I, I'm not sure where their tokens are trading. I can't. I didn't look that up, but their the completion of the uh, token uh, distribution is done, mm -hmm. and so, and we do have a chart showing that. Coming well, they're up. adding exchanges this quarter, so maybe we'll we'll look them up at the end of end of the quarter beginning of next and <clears throat> excuse me everyone and see where they're at you know we should do that for one of our shows go back to all our coins that we looked at and just do a quick overview of each one yeah yeah let's do that for our 25th episode i agree let's do it cool 
All right, so before we get into our CGI 30 and our mana update, uh, I have a special announcement for our show tonight. And that is tonight on the steaming pile. That's at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with my friends, um, Gone Rogue, Narashi, and Sean S. Porter. Uh, we have a very special guest, Yabba P. Matt. He is a steam witness and the creator of Steam Monsters. And we're going to find out if he's the co-creator or co-founder or if he is the creator and, and Agrod is um, working with him. So we're going to find that out. But he's uh, agreed to come on and we're going to do our regular steaming pile show where we come in and we don't have an agenda. And we let the viewers and the people online kind of help guide the discussion. So we're very excited to have him on there and we're looking forward to it. Chaz, have you bought any Steam Monster packs yet? I have not. What? Have you I... even heard of it? No. Dude. <laughs> do you have a $1.60 worth of Steam dollars? I do. I SPD? think I do. Yeah. Well, let's get, we should, uh, you should come on tonight and buy your first packs if you're still awake. Okay, yeah, if I'm still awake. That's late for me. <laughs> Ah. So, All right. So but let's. I'll try to make this show. I you know it's it's like at the end of the day for me, I'm just cleaning up. Oh yeah, no, it's okay. But uh, we'll we'll have you on at least sometime. Maybe we'll do a one off here and have you uh, look at it and and do a review of Steam the Steam Monsters project. Okay, that'd be cool. I All like right. That. So next up, we have our CGI thirty crypto index. Yeah, just thought I'd throw that up there. It's a weekly thing now, and. Uh, so our 52-week uh, gain is 82.68%. So over the last 52 weeks, we're actually still up, which is pretty respectable, you know, for a year's time. Yeah. Uh, since the beginning of the year, though, it's not looking so sweet. We're down 61%. Okay, okay. <laughs> and then on a monthly basis, the month to date, 7.71 up. So, so this month has been a pretty good month. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And if you look at the, the end of that chart, that's a three month chart we're mm -hmm. looking at. Uh, you can see that there actually was an upturn there at the end. So looks like it might have bottomed and we're we may get some stability out of this. And Okay. Uh, and uh, I'm listening. And, yeah, and you know what else I did? I was reading I, I sent you the, the website and I, and I don't know if you got a chance to look at it about do the coins all follow each other as far as price? And there's quite a significant uh, amount of coins that will track Bitcoin. Yeah. Yep. And go up. So it's it's pretty interesting because Bitcoin, yeah, it's the big daddy of, of the coins. And to follow it follows for to follow that only a one single coin somewhere along the line that's gotta break off, I think. Well, that's intriguing, right? Because I think that's the next thing is like, who's really going to rise to the top? Yeah. What are the ones, what is the plot, what are the platforms that are going to add value to the blockchain community, but also be able to scale to the point to where they can open it up and be a global platform that is fully functional? Right, and so we have two two elements to that. One is uh, interoperability of blockchains together, which we looked at Polkadot, mm -hmm. you know, at one point, and they're still out there, still working, and so that blockchains can communicate with other blockchains. And then we have Ethereum, which uh, you know people are building on Ethereum all the time. You you see every time you see something, it's usually well we're build, building it on the ERC twenty contract or. The Ethereum blockchain, so they they have a they have a great uh, project there, and I think that in the long haul they're going to be a big player, a very big player. Yeah, they do. And uh, the the other interesting one is the the platform that we're broadcasting on the Steam blockchain. Um, they have SBD and they have Steam and they have Steam Power within the platform. So that's interesting too. It, it'll be, I'm surprised at how low they're listed overall, like on, on coin market cap, but I do think that they're, they have a lot of use case respectability and they have, 
um, that y you can build on their platform as well. And uh, soon, I know they're going to have their smart media token project where people will be able to create their own tokens on this platform and build apps right. around it as well. So, so this it's community cool. also has that that Ethereum like aspect to it. Right, and uh, I think that the the tentacles are growing and. It'll still take some more time, but we're going to get uh, very solid in this in the next two years, I would think. So let's talk about now, let's talk about your next favorite platform, the platform that's going to give you free money from the heavens called Mana. So here's where I fell on my face because I was trying to rush through this and get it done. That is not a Mana token distribution. That is a Glitzcoin distribution. Ah, uh. So if you and got I a magic the slide there, around and da 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 da. Yeah, All I got right. me good. So, well, we'll fix it. <laughs> yeah, we'll fix that for you. But this is the the Glitzcoin uh, distribution. Yeah, look at that. It's magic. <laughs> there it's, we go. It's like telekinesis. I just say it and it happens. And now we got to move it back up though, because we okay. can't have it up. But well, yes. we, we didn't go over that then. No, we did not cover oh, this yet. All right. Well, we're not doing a mana update yet, guys, because we have to talk about the token distribution for Glitzcoin. So the token sale, 20% of the tokens were sold. Uh, the market making was 20%. They got 20% of the coins, which that's a, I think that's a lot for the market makers to get that. Okay. Uh, token sales or excuse me, uh, community was 20% and or the token sales were 25. So, uh, and the company kept 35%, which I don't oh. think that's unreasonable to have, have a reserve. They accept Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Ripple, and Stellar. Awesome. That's pretty cool. That's good. Yeah, yeah that's very good. That opened, so well, that's smart, right? Because that opens it up to a lot different markets by accepting the different coins and tokens right and i just want to point out that ripple is included in there of That's, course you do yes <laughs> Chaz's favorite coin ripple yeah i love ripple I, I love their project i think their project's very viable of course after spending 30 years in the banking industry you know i'm, I'm sort of yeah hyped up when when things get better all right well that's the distribution now Let's talk about your favorite new project, Money from the Skies, the MANA Universal Basic Income Project. And uh, I just wanted to do a follow-up and because I, I signed up and got verified and actually did receive in my account uh, a small portion of MANA tokens. Look at but, that. You got 0 .0031 cents. Yeah. I mean, it's just uh, it's awesome. You should but, be retiring pretty soon. Here's my thing. Excuse this me. is like step one. I know, I know. I'm just teasing. Right? <laughs> and so step step two is going to be uh, continued deposits. And then step three is, can I get this money? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so once, I, once I'm able to, there's enough there for me to pull some out, I want to try and pull some out and see what happens. Sure, right. Well, I think Maybe. you need to start signing people up. I do. I have uh, actually two people. Oh, really? Yes. This, this is an older slide, so it's not showing the referrals. Oh, good job. And so I have two people signed up, and I need, I need more. And you, you actually, there's a link for us in the next slide for both of us. Well, great segue, Chaz. Yeah, so that they can actually use us. And what happens is when you get a referral, they double your amount that you get. The next referral it gives you double that. Okay. So... So they're using network marketing principles, but it's a for pro it's a non profit organization. Right, right. So we need to see how this all pans out and we're testing out this project to see how it works. But can you also yeah. donate to ma the MANA project and have it be a tax deferred or a tax deductible donation? I believe that is possible, yes. That's interesting. And so really, it's just kind of like a, it's really just them saying, hey, we think that this is a need. Here is our solution. 
to make universal basic income happen? And here's how you can get involved. Yeah, I think it's it's a, a pretty lofty goal. Mm -hmm. And I think they've thought it out really well. They've actually worked through all the parts of the process. Um, if you look at their logic and the way they operate things, uh, there's a lot of people involved in the decision-making process. So it's just not a single small group of people. There's other organizations and things involved. In it. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I like that. We'll, we'll definitely keep keep on with the mana folks um your camera froze again so if you want to try to bring it back that'd be good i will unfreeze me and so we have the sign up links there and the slides i'll get them in the post so you guys can check them out and the last thing that we have is a re i'm sorry we're going to review our d previous discussion because the eight megapixel project for 19 south has has kind of taken off and that's yours and we're going to give yeah. you some time to to talk through that and have a discussion yes. uh, so i've been working with the acorn collective and this it's they're a funding group uh blockchain funding group okay they have uh allowed me to send them information this has been quite a process to get it to this point uh this is not a live site what we have here what i have here is a showcase and they're trying to get uh, information or trying to get uh, indications of interest. So if you go to the website and I, uh, I'm on there, I'm on the first page. If you go Can we the go page, there now? Uh, yeah, I, I put a link in the actually attached to that. Uh, attached image. to the picture? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay. And... So there's a uh, comment button on the website. I didn't put it on this slide, but uh, you can make comments and, and, and say things about the project or what you think about the project. And so the next step after this, if I get enough indication of interest, uh, I possibly could get a live site and start uh, building funds up for the South 19 South project. Now, let me tell you what that is. 19 South is a pilot video to get to jumpstart the 8MP project, which allows community filmmakers, uh, people who want to make films and want to compete in this project, they also need a camera, um, a small camera. It doesn't have to be uh, a super uh, expensive or professional camera. You can use your phone if you want. Okay. And so you get people that normally wouldn't have the opportunity or the to, to do this, to get their, their stuff online or get their stuff looked at, get their video looked at, we'll be able to do this. And hopefully out, out of this will come uh, future filmmakers. And one of the things I'd like to see happen is that the people that are the best of the best, that do their best job with their their iPhone or their Android phone, mm -hmm. we'll, be able to, we'll be able to get some kind of funding for them. So 19 South is a project to have individuals create short films and submit them to the 8 megapixel project. 19 South is the pilot film. It's the pilot film. What does that mean? That means we're going to do it a sample film. Okay. And, and then we're going to use normal filmmaking equipment, you know, like a can of iPhone or even a, a, a handy cam like Sony has. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have the super expensive equipment for this. What we're looking at is, you know, for content. Who are the uh, best content providers on a budget? Right. Content, creativity. Uh, so we want to want to be able to get people who normally wouldn't do this out there to do it. Okay. And the most creative people will. And what's the, what, what, what's the, say this project does go and, and take off, what is the target money going to be used for? All right, so we're going to have some equipment that we'll be able to loan to the, uh, to the participants. So let's say somebody needs a camera dolly, which I'm building right now. We'll be able to loan them the camera dolly. Uh, maybe they need a light fixture so they can light something up. Mm -hmm. We're going to loan them that equipment as well. Okay. And so we'll have a, we'll have a limited quantity of equipment. Part of this, of course, is used for promotion. We're going to need to promote 
this so we get people involved in it. If they don't know about it, they're not going to do it. And is it going to be a local, regional, or national, or global to start? I, I, I initially had, had envisioned this as a, a Genesee County project. Okay. But what I'm thinking is, and I know you showed some interest in this, I'm thinking that we can take this nationwide. Okay. And open it up to a lot of people. Gotcha. Of course, I will, I will need uh, judges for this. We'll need people to, uh, we'll need a little bit of a training, for, you know, a facility, even if it's online. Because let's face it, people who have never done this before are probably not going to be familiar with editing equipment mm -hmm. or software. So we need to, to get them up to speed on editing software. So we might have some online classes for that. I'm hoping that some of the providers of editing software will volunteer to help these people get their get their videos done. So I will be once the funding is on on the board, we're starting to get money. I'll start contacting those people. Okay, gotcha. And yeah, and I we'll, go ahead. Hopefully, we'll get outside involvement. And another part of this is I want to get. Uh, uh, camera companies or, or camera shops involved donating like cameras if, to the winners. That's cool. And I think we should u figure out the best way to utilize Steam it as part of that too. Um, wh wh whether it's starting our own like uh, tab or tag for conversations or doing specific things on DLive uh, to broadcast the, the and get up boats and things like that. Right. We will, we'll need, a, we'll need a platform for this and the steam appears to be the one that I would prefer. Okay. All right. Sounds good. So that's the 19 South eight megapixel project. I call yeah, them phone well, films now. Yeah. Well, I'll, let me explain. 19 South is, is a wing in Bellevue where they treat uh, mentally challenged people. Okay. And that's why I selected that because my the, the pilot film is going to be about a schizophrenic young man who is uh, or a young woman who is uh, having a challenge just to get to the store to buy food. Yeah. What we take for granted is not what other people can do yeah. easily. Absolutely. Cool. Well, thanks for bringing that in and and, and talking through that with us. Yeah, and, and I need again. More. I need comments. So people go and, and make comments on the website. And... So go to the post. Uh, go to the post on Steam it or D Live, and click on the slides for today link, and go down to this project and click on that picture, and that'll bring you over to the project. Um, one thing that I, one other piece of feedback that I would give you, Chaz, would be to just take this link and do a separate post on your Steam it blog. I did. What? I did that. Oh, all right. Let me see. I didn't so see you. So you haven't been reading my blog. Well, I saw your last video on you making a... Your... Yeah, I'm a busy boy. Okay. Oh, I'm going over there. And I have another video coming up for that, too. Let's see here. I oh, see you put up coming. a... I see you re-steamed mine. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that nice? All right, here we go. Oh, you did yesterday. Yeah. So it's right, out everyone. there. So there's our buddy, C Rollo3. Make sure you give him a follow. And go ahead and upvote this 19 South movie project to promote community movie making. You you already got a comment already. Was it from a bot? Uh, I I don't know. I haven't I haven't looked at it yet. I was busy this morning trying to get ready for the show. Congratulations! You've completed the following achievement. It's from the Steam It board. Oh, cool! So there I you go. A of I will go ahead and re-steam it, and that concludes today's episode. It was a wonderful episode. I thought we did got made some accomplishments there. It was it was good. I'm sorry that your video keeps freezing. You actually just froze up right again right now. I, I fixed it. But, but uh, yeah, there you go. But I, we got to head out of here, guys. But thanks for tuning in to Morning Coins with John and Chaz. We'll be back. We will be back next Tuesday. Next Tuesday is good for me. And so thanks to all of you for watching. Thanks to our folks who provided upvotes. 
and we will see you next week. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. And have a great rest of your Tuesday.